Intuition, by definition, is a thought before your brain overcomplicates it. I believe intuition is the roadmap to your personal happiness and success. Allow this awesome conversation to inspire you to just be more of you. I'm your host, Jimmy Ward Mize, and welcome to Inspired by Jimmy M. All righty, everyone. Welcome to another Positivity Conversation. Positivity Conversation number 19. 19 weeks in the making. And just to throw that out there really quickly, I know I had a person on last week named Heather Parody. This is just a fluke coincidence, by the way, of today's guest. But today's guest, I'm calling this girl a freaking superwoman, okay? Um, I know, like, for real. Like, she's doing it all. Um, I know she's... I heard you probably actually you may actually see this on here, but the queen of couponing. Oh my gosh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, I'm not even exactly sure what the um, the adult toys. I'm not even sure. I can't remember what that's called, but we're going to definitely talk about that as well. Definitely talk about her marriage, which has been oh my gosh, like her husband is freaking amazing. I work with him, and to hear him speak about his wife is phenomenal okay she is running the household and he has no problem admitting it but she is a mother of seven and damn girl looks damn good to throw that off i just want to put that out there as well but i know right she's been trying to fix her hair since we started this morning but we won't we're gonna get her there she said she had a late night <clears throat> we don't want to know what that was about we'll okay oh we'll talk yeah. about it <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. We have Ms. Heather Townsend, and I am ecstatic. Thank you so much, Heather, for saying yes. Thank you for having me. I love the thing about it is um, when Errol starts a job, I start a job with him. And so whoever he brings into the fold, they're part of my family as well. So, yeah, so you're part of the family. Well, I appreciate that, <laughs> even though he gets on my nerves on so many occasions. But this is not about him. <laughs> this is about you, okay? okay? I'm wanting to dig into your mindset. Like, I mean, dig into your mindset. So before we get started with that, though, I want you to do a quick introduction of yourself. Like, what is it all that you... I know you're a stay-at-home mom, and I know that your life is so busy, and I know that you have so much going on. And I feel like I've missed so much. So what exactly do you do on a day-to-day basis? On a day-to-day basis? Are you ready? Yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Monday through Friday. I am a full-time, ready-to-go, sun-up to sunset mom. I am getting those kids ready for school. I'm there getting um, my high schooler together. I have a seventh grader, a fifth grader, a third grader, a kindergartner. I have a nine-month-old. I'm getting them to school. <laughs> volunteer. I'm at school more often than not. Um, when I'm not at the school, I'm at the house. I'm making sure everybody has something to eat, something to wear. I'm mm. making sure the cats are fed. Um, I take care of my mom when she needs me to take care of my mom's 82. I didn't know and, that. Yeah. My mom's didn't. 82. Whatever she needs, um, I will drop what I'm doing. I'll go see about her as well. Um, I'm my sister's uh, assistants when they're at work, whatever they need. I usually stop and do things for them. So I am a very uh, busy stay-at-home mom that's normally not at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> gotcha. And then gotcha. Again, I turned into a bedroom candy boutique consultant. Mm -hmm. um, so I do those parties every weekend. So whenever you're ready, you and your friends want to get together, have some fun and don't want to, you know, like leave the house, but you want to bring the party to you. I'm that girl. Gotcha. And I, build a team. Um, I do couponing. I do couponing classes. I teach people. <laughs> how I to heard. Do I'm all over the place. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't so, sit still. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this then. So have you... Kids wise, have you guys always wanted a big family? Actually, uh, with the family situation, it kind of just fell in our lap. Like, literally, I feel like having children fell in our lap because um, early on, when we were like younger and we just kind of started dating and everything, it was my plan to never have children. So, you have <laughs> got to be joking, baby. I want children because I'm the youngest of seven. And okay, I have, okay. Um, of course, I have six older siblings, and everybody had children. 
And so by the time I became about 14 or 15, I was like, kids suck. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided I did not want children. Um, I, you know, I was like, okay, in order for me to have like the career I wanted, like my career path, I wanted to be like this full time, you know, corporate attorney. I was gonna move to like my my ten year plan was to finish college, move to DC, or be in DC, and um, uh, pursue a career in law because I really, really like like most of the time when I was a kid, I um, interned at different law firms in Memphis. So okay. I wanted to be a, and um, so the whole having kids thing kind of fell in my lap because I had too much fun in college my second year. So oh 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 And then things, because, you know, I could not imagine myself not being a mom after that. So it was like it went from you know day to night. It was like I can't imagine having children to I can't imagine my life without them. So. After that, um, they just started showing up. It was like we tried everything to not have kids, and everything we tried got us kids. So, <laughs> and that's why I said you must be the child. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! I will say I know um, I know Winston and I. We've been talking about it recently, and like I want, I just want three. Like I don't want to go. I'm not going past three. He only wanted one, so we was like, we may settle on two. You know, we might we may compromise with two, but that'll be it. But seven, oh my gosh! Yes, and even the craziest things, you know, we had we got to six, and we were like, okay, we're good. We got the four boys, two girls. Everyone has a partner. We're good. Yeah. Oh, this one off to college. I don't know what happened. I guess. Oh, girl, please don't say you don't know what happened. Let's. <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Uh-uh, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm not having it. <laughs> so, like, it started all over again. Oh, my goodness. So, but it's been so much fun. I would not trade it for the world. I could not say my That's life good. would be better not having them. I cannot imagine not having the type of family that we have, as large yeah. as this family is, as crazy as they are, as crazy as my day is. I could not imagine any other life but this one. That's what I'm talking about. I love that. Because see, which is, again, which is the basis of this show, is about following your intuition. So although a lot of times we enter into adulthood and we have this <laughs> preperceived notion as right. to what we want to do or we feel that we want to do, and then when our intuition takes over and we allow it, to kind of take over, like we find our place. And then we're able to be as happy as you are right now. You know what I mean? With, with a life that 30 years ago wasn't even on your mind. And so, and I'm like, and, and I'm, that is what this is all, like life is all about for me personally. You know, it's yeah. finding that voice, finding that intuition and just living it. So that's yeah. what I love that. I love it. Well, I'm, I want to let this kind of branch off no, I'm not trying to get into y'all sex life, okay? So I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I still got to look at it. 45 people have, have known about our Baby, I'm not going off into that. I got to see Errol on Monday morning, okay? <laughs> but I'm, I definitely want this to bridge, because obviously, I'm going to say this. Obviously, there is a healthy sex life, apparently. But when it comes down to bedroom candy, quote unquote, which is what the name of the business is, when it right. comes down to that, how do you go about helping other couples? Like, Because I, I, I know that it's far more than just what you sell. Right. So how, how do you go by helping other couples to have a healthy sex life like yours? Well, the first thing that I like to do is I like to help them to identify whatever challenges or issues they're having. And okay. sometimes it'd be something as simple as just not being on the same page. You know, mm. even, you know, not being on the same page sexually could be, you know, anything from um, I need the lights off or I need the lights on or, you know, I need mm. that. But you need to find, yeah. you know, that common ground with each other so that you can be as uh, comfortable and organic as you can be with each other and then sometimes it can be something as simple as not knowing that you need to have the inner strength to say to your partner these are the things that I need yeah. or you know and find a way to not say you know if, if your needs are not being met 
say it in a loving way, like, hey, you know, everything's great, but I need a little more of this or could and, you, mm -hmm. you know, so just being able to help those couples find what their voice, you know, uh, their voices are for each other is usually what I like to do. And then we can work from there. We can build from there. Gotcha. And so once we kind of build from there, you know, then that I'm able to suggest some things that can help improve their sex life or, you know, sometimes I'm just there to be a counselor. You know, or just like, like I swear that's what was going through my mind while you were talking. But <laughs> I got you. A lot of times at parties, you know, parties are fun and everything. But when that door closes and I'm one on one with a the customer, then I, be, you know, I'm no longer a party girl. I'm like, what is it that you need from me in order for me to help you? And a lot of times, you know, a lot of my customers just need someone to listen to them. And from there that empowerment comes from within because I'm like, Hey girl, you can say this to him or you don't have to mm -hmm. say that. To him. And, and then all of a sudden you can see the change happening. Like I've actually seen someone going from being insecure sitting in the room with me to the, by the time I'm, you know, uh, walking her back out of the room, you know, she's a totally different person because someone has given her that permission to say to her partner, Hey, something's right or wrong or we need to talk or you know maybe we just need to you know sit down and and discuss what's going to work for the both of us so i really enjoyed that aspect of helping people oh you know what i can see that that i can see and i and okay 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 oh my gosh like that is really blowing my mind right now because i could okay there are you familiar with brene brown yes like mm -hmm. she was, she spoke about something similar in, in her TED talk and about how couples come to bed with this big, like hunking armor that we typically use yeah. to fight the rest of the world. But when we get home, we tend to not release it. And so you have these two big adults with this big ass armor on and intimacy is just not there because they're not being vulnerable. And so I, I get yeah. that. And so you're opening that door and giving them spaces to kind of, open up and just speak to one another. I like that. Yeah. Like, I never really yeah, looked at us. You have to what? As you just, you have to. You have to do that. You have to let that wall down. Like, I, I never really looked at a, because um, we, in, in my, my world, we always have known those just to be sex parties. And I hate to say that word because it sounds so vulgar. <laughs> but, you know, but that's what it was about. And typically, mm -hmm. when I would go to them, it was me and my girlfriends, and it was really more so about pleasuring yourself versus being in a right. relationship. And so, mm -hmm. because at that time, not, none of us were in a committed relationship, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. You know, so it was, again, it was more so about pleasuring yourself versus the couple's aspect mm -hmm. of that. So I love that. I love that you're working with, the, obviously, a, a huge range of people. Yeah, definitely yeah. a huge range. And um, one of the things that uh, I talked to Errol about is, you know, being able to appeal to anyone in whichever situation you are in. You know, I've dealt with women who've dealt with um, certain types of abuse uh, in mm, previous oh, relationships. Jesus. To leave it in that relationship and open themselves up to another relationship or another person who, you know, you can't put whatever that other person did to you on the next person. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, and, and I talk about this a lot of times in my parties, there was a young lady that came to me and wanted to know how to speak to her husband because they had previously had a divorce. They, they divorced and they got back together. But in that time from the divorce till the new relationship, she gained weight. And so okay. he, she was that he was no longer attracted to her in the same way that he was then. But then as we kept talking, it wasn't about her weight. It was his addiction to porn. And she was feeling like it was her, like that was her fault that he become addicted to porn. So from that point, that's when I go, this is out of, you know, this is higher than my face, right? <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh my God. In my pay grade. I got you. Yeah, and then so I can refer them to people because I'm like, hey, I got a couple of friends that are therapists. Um, you know, you can call them. I'll let them know that you're on the way. And, you know, trying to help get them the help that they need because I know that things like that impacts your sex life, no matter how mm -hmm. much you try to let it go and everything. And I obviously don't have that much skill set to be able to yes. do that, but just to be able to tell them, 
okay. It's okay to talk to someone about this mm -hmm. so that you can side out. You know, the, I feel like it's it's kind of a, uh, it's almost like a ministry for me, you know, so just to be able to appeal to people and help them in the, in those ways. Um, and so that, that's why I try to make my parties more educational. Um, you know, we, I give you a lot of education in the, in the front part. We're going to have a lot of fun, but then at the same time, we're going to talk about what you need. So how did you get involved in that? Because I, I know you didn't just wake up one day and was like, I'm, I like sex toys and I'm going to teach people how to use them. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny story. Let me <laughs> Before I became a consultant, I never touched a sex toy. And okay. So, okay. Yeah, never touched one. Ne never had an idea that it was anything that was interesting to me. I never understood the attraction to, you know, I was just, I never <clears> walked <throat> to like, um, What's that store? Crystals. I had never done anything. Mm. On that level. It was just something that I didn't feel was necessary for me. Gotcha. Um, people, but it just wasn't me. And gotcha. so I used to do events with a friend and we decided to do a Valentine's Day thing, a little event for women. And she said, well, why don't we um, call somebody to do like um, a passion party? And I was like, and what is that? <laughs> so I would have been like the same thing. What is that, honey? <laughs> well, well, you know, she'll come and she'll do like she'll show you the toys and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll bite. And so we got a girl to come, and she was showing them how to do stuff. And what I noticed was she was like, she picked up like a piece of paper like this, and she was reading off the paper, and she was showing us the product. And I was like, really? That's that, that's all. That? <laughs> and so everybody was really excited. They were like, hey. Want to know about this and I'm about it, and I'm like, what? That's all what? you have to do. <laughs> I went up to her. I said, "Look, what do I have to do to do this? Because I think I have the skills for that." And she was like, "You want to join my team?" I was like, "Yeah, I guess." Sure. It's <laughs> it. <laughs> so I joined. I joined just from watching because I was like, "Okay, this is this makes sense for me because I want to do something different." You know, mm -hmm. I had been a stay-at-home mom for a long time at that point. Um, about the only people that I talked to were little people, that, you know, asking for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Gotcha. gotcha. You know, I needed to be able to get out and have an outlet to, you know, talk on a, a level. Adult where level. Lose. Yeah, I didn't want to lose yeah. all of my vocabulary as an adult. And so yeah. what I found was this This just became my niche. It's just uh, something that um, helps me to bridge a lot of the things that I have, like my background is in mass communications. Um, my background is, you know, I do a lot of public speaking, like with church and everything. Okay, so okay. the thing for me to just try it and I tried it for a while. And, um, at first I was like, I don't know, but then, I really, <laughs> you know, cause I'm like the church people, what they gonna say? I know. Like, I cannot believe you just said this passion party in the same sentence with the church speaking. So, I mean, I wasn't going to bust you out, but since you brought it up. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, my God. And so, I got yeah, you. I started, though. I started from doing that and then realizing that there was something a little bit bigger than what I saw uh, surface-wise. And when I really started digging down and seeing how this can help, um, you know, people in general, then I really started to kind of dig in and make it part of who I am. I got you. Have you seen – there's a show that's called um, – Damn it. Oh, and that, it was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> you should have blurted it out. <laughs> I know, right? I should have. Well, I wanted to listen to you, and I was, well, I was listening, and I didn't want to interrupt. I cannot think, I can't think of what it's called. It's called Sex Something. Mm -hmm. It's called Sex Something, and it was on HBO or something. And what I can, and, and I, I want to say it was the history, or the, it was either the history of sex or the art of sex. Mm -hmm. And I could be totally getting that wrong. But um, it was based on something that happened, hell, shit, in the 50s and 60s, where people <laughs> were trying to um, explore sex in and, and different aspects of it. And they really didn't know what they were doing. So they were trying to experiment and, and see what it was about, you know? And so um, listening to you talk about that and dealing with the church people, like, because I can see how a lot of people could assume, especially dealing with church, could assume that it's offensive. But realistically... Yeah. It's, it's, especially if it's within a healthy marriage, 
I'm um, like, it's something that you need to explore, something that you need to know. And I think it was called The History of Sex or The Art of Sex. I can't remember which one. But it was extremely, it was graphic. Oh, honey, it was graphic. And that's what graphic, and I think that, especially church people, and I, I say this all the time, church people forget that we're, first of all, first and foremost, human. And yeah. um, sex is just another spiritual way to connect with someone. So in order for you to, to me, be a whole and complete person you need to be you know spiritually connected and if you don't feel like sex is a spiritually connecting type of thing you might mm -hmm. be doing it wrong wrong <laughs> wait a minute Pre preach miss have preach now wait a minute wait a minute we say, doing, say you may be doing it wrong you need to say call me for a class i got you we say, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god girl i am totally i that's a, i'm gonna put your name out there like that if, if sex is not spiritual like that's a tweetable moment okay if sex is not spiritual for you honey you need to call me because you're doing it wrong i oh wow oh my god i swear i'm tweeting it out i'm tweeting it out <laughs> Oh my God. But I mean, you're right. You're really right. I mean, I did not, I really didn't get that until after I got married, to be honest with you. But I, I didn't get that until after that. But there was a deeper connection. There was a reason why I said yes to this marriage. You know, like it was all of those factors. It was all of those factors. And so, and, and on top of that, you know, you're growing as an adult and you, you know, having to figure yourself out and figure out what you do like and what you don't like anyway. You know, so right. I, I, can, I can see how. <laughs> people could be doing it wrong. <laughs> I could, I could, I could definitely see that. I can see that. Okay. So what, what about the kids? How do the kids feel about that? About me doing the party? Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Since my first four, our boys, it was okay. uh, really interesting at first because I guess my oldest might've been I don't know how old is he. He might have been like ten or eleven, so he quite didn't quite understand it at first. But as he started to get a little older, it actually helped me to be able to talk to them and not be so um, scared. I guess is a good word because as a parent, you do get scared to have. Yeah, I, oh, I bet. <laughs> you know, so mm. to be able to use words like penis and vagina without mm. being like, you know. That's <laughs> you know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have grown up words. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Damn, girl! Oh my god, Heather! Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> I just, I want you not to be talking to anybody over the age of 16 or 17 talking about your pee, -pee. Okay? Like, please don't do that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Okay. It did. It did. I was able to talk. Oh, Jesus. Oh, let me oh, okay. I Let me collect myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, Anyway, when I started talking to my teenagers, they were so comfortable with just, they know, first of all, they know what I do. And one of the things they were like, so, you know, what is it that your parties have? So, like, we sat there and we started talking about things. Like, and I, I'm really open with them. And um, <coughs> I am really trying to get this. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't help the situation. <clears throat> I I'm supposed to be a professional. I, completely. Okay. I see that right now. <laughs> but oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> so, okay. So, um, when I first started telling them about this, I would give them, you know, age appropriate information. So, yeah. I was like, okay, this is what I do. And everything. And then after a while, like, my oldest would be like, you got another package in the mail. You got another package. I'm like, hey, open it. Tell me what's in it. And he's like, really? Oh I'm my like, God. Okay. Still. I need you to open this, but I need you to not freak out. Like, that was the first thing. And so yes. he'd be like, okay. And it got to a point, like, especially when they got a little older, he'd be like, hey, I see you putting, you know, your shipments together and everything. Do you need me to just help you, 
And I'd be like, yeah. So, you know, we go through the checklist and everything. And during that time, we were able to talk. We could talk openly about anything. You know, I was able to talk to him before he went to college talking about, hey, look, you know, of course, as a parent, I'm always tell you to wait, you know, in this mm -hmm. and that. But if you can't wait, let me give you some information. Let me show you what you need. Don't go run into people that don't know anything. You can come to me for anything, even if it's for condoms, even though I don't want you to have sex. Hey, Amen. You know, <clears throat> but yeah. just know that if you have questions and everything, you can come to me for that. So, mm -hmm. and now, you know, having all the kids uh, and everything, it's really easy to talk to them, you know, just about their bodies and everything. And, you know, telling them certain things are okay, some things not okay you know this is what we prefer but we're not saying it's wrong we're just saying yeah. we don't prefer it and um i find that it it helps them to open up about other things in their lives as well because they know that okay if she's not judgmental about this then i ain't talking to her about anything, about anything. <laughs> it was that, i know right now mama <laughs> i got you i got you um you know we're very open about things like that and we try to be a safe haven, even if it's not for our children. Maybe there are other children that, you know, just need to talk to us about anything. Everybody knows that we're we're a safe haven. You know, if yeah. you just need to, you know, do whatever it is. It, it really helps you to just kind of be more open. For me, it helped me to be more yeah. open. I was a stick in the mud at first. You let Errol tell it. I was a stick in the mud at first. But um, I've changed a lot just doing those parties because I realized that, everyone needs a place to confide and everyone needs that soft place to fall. And maybe it's just my job to provide that soft place. So that's what I do. I catch you. And I can, I completely respect that. Especially, especially like I said, on the kids aspect, because a lot mm -hmm. of times I know me growing up, honey, mm -hmm. that it was off the table. Yeah. It was like, yeah. it was completely off the table to talk about something like that. But when you don't have those conversations that are meaningful, that are needed, Right. People tend to develop, you know, whatever in their mind that they feel is right. right. And without that guidance there, they can easily go astray. So I, I definitely applaud that. And I, I definitely do. I promise I do. I really, I thank you for being one of those parents. I really do. Like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Show aside. But I, I really, really do appreciate that. Because, um, hell, I mean, they're our future. Like, seriously, like, I'm not trying to be all political or not, you know, but they really are the people that's going to be running this country. And so if they don't get it together now, <laughs> you know, we yeah. SOL. So I got you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> which, I, not a segue, but cute, honey. Okay. I tried it, honey. Oh, I tried it. <laughs> I tried it. I swear I did. Like, I've always been one. Like, until I met my husband, like, I really, I never kept myself on a budget. Like, I never overspent, but it was always, if I had it, I know I can go shop. And if I yeah. went shopping, I'm like, if it's on a mannequin, that's exactly what I want. Like, I didn't have time to look for bargains. I didn't have time right. to see what was on sale. I didn't give a damn. This is what I right. want, and let's go. My husband came on the scene, <clears throat> and this mother lover does not buy anything unless it has that exactly. <laughs> He does it by nothing unless it has that woohoo logo on it from Kroger saying that it's on sale. Okay. So, and it threw me for a loop. And I never, again, a lot of things I just allow him to control because I'm like, whatever, except for my clothing. That's the only thing, hands off, boo, bam, you know. And even now, I look for things on clearance. I do look for things on clearance in my favorite stores, but. Right. Couponing. Whew. Okay. I had a class. I it was so much work. Uh -huh. It was so much work. I am not gonna lie. Like I could not, it couldn't hold my attention. And it could not. And I found out that I was not as organized as I thought. Mm, so yeah. you know, yeah, I just so. My question to you with the sex parties is what I'm calling or mm -hmm. adult parties <laughs> with the kids, with the husband running a household. How in the hell do you have time to be that organized to actually do not just couponing, but extreme couponing? How do you have time for that? Um, Sundays are my day for organization when it comes to couponing. So gotcha. 
but I do like Saturday night. I don't care what time I get in. Saturday night, I'll go and I'll um, go online and read the coupon previews. I'll pick up my paper Sunday morning. <clears throat> By Sunday afternoon, they're organized as to matching them up with sales and everything. And um, I got my kids involved. <laughs> oh, okay. So you got help. <laughs> you got help. I got you. <laughs> Baby, get, uh, get the straight line going. <laughs> <laughs> you go learn. <laughs> put in that for your mama. Uh, and when I have them, you know, like when I print off coupons and everything, my youngest, I'll, well, my five year old always goes, Mama, there's something printed off the coupon. Bring it on down. Bring baby. it on, baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's total buy-in with the family. Like, you know, a lot of things that we do is, you know, it has to be a family effort. Yes. And so even when I'm couponing, and Errol will tell you, um, he'll go get the papers some mornings because, you know, I'm just not getting up. Or he'll, you know, he'll go get my papers, um, and then we'll, you know, spread them all out and everything. And he'll know, he knows when there's a big sale coming because I'm like, hey, next sale's like next week. And I gotta get my, get, you know, <laughs> he's like, okay, cool. Do. And he used to think it was crazy until he started coming with me shopping to see like the savings. And I think one of the ones that really got him is one day I think I might have had like a four hundred dollar basket, and I think we paid like what maybe seventy five dollars or less, something wow. like that. Wow. Um, and like okay, so I don't know what just happened, Oops. but we need to get out of this, and so you know. One started seeing I have a system don't mess my system up I have a number of things I have these you know I have you know different um, methods that uh, help us then he you know he had the buy-in because it's like okay I get it I really get what you're doing and so um, you know even with the kids you know I'll tell them okay you know I'm going to the store and I want to buy this and I'm like okay so you have ten dollars you have a coupon no okay so you're gonna use all your ten dollars on this on this <clears throat> Thing and it helps them to save because they know that if you had a coupon, if it was on sale, you can stretch that dollar. And mm, so mm. you have to start, I think, you know, with us, we've started them young, but like someone like you, I wouldn't start you on like a full binder. You're not ready for a whole binder. <laughs> I'm not, girl. I tried, try, baby. I tried. Digital coupon kind of person. If it's downloaded to your shopping cart, I will be good to go. Yeah, then you can do it. You are, yeah. you know, you have to do steps and do things that work for you because, you know, like I tell people, you can't be crazy like me with a binder and fighting with the manager. That's that's my job, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. Come in and save, you know, thirty to fifty percent just doing a couple of little things every time. So, um, I definitely hmm. work with people one on one show them what works for them in their lifestyle because everybody can't do you know everybody can't spend an hour and a half in the store and uh no. talking to the whole staff about clearance today so you know <laughs> everybody can't do that <laughs> so so you teach you teach classes on that as well with the couponing i do i teach uh classes i have a group uh on facebook actually and it's called let's talk coupons memphis and okay. what what i do is just uh, put sales out there. Uh, I don't go into detail in a group because what I found is that you need to have like maybe 30 minutes to an hour dedicated to just learning, you know, specific things. So we don't go into depth about that in the group, but I do tell, you know, it's really for new couponers and okay. it's just little things like, hey, this is on sale this week. You got this paper last week, pull that coupon, do this. And so, you know, it's hmm. more on and kind of holding your hands, spoon feeding you just the basic basics of couponing. And the way I feel is once you learn the basics, then you can kind of fine tune things to work for you. And yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And I really like, and, and he, I know that the digital couponing exists. Like I know it's there. Like I do. I'm just, I, uh, uh, like I know it's, I just never really gave it a chance. Huh? Huh? <laughs> So hard to click on that button, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you don't you don't think about it until after the fact, you know. And you're yeah. like, damn, I could have saved some money, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm right. gonna do better. Fans in the store 
with my uh, my Kroger app open, and I'm like, okay, is this on sale? Okay, no, it's not, because I left my coupons at home. And then, like, if I find it, then I'm like, call, tell my kids, hey, open your phone up. Okay, put that coupon on your phone. Because <laughs> so, I'm like, because you can do that and then just upload it to your phone number, right? And then so when it comes across, it just can't. And, so, and again, I, I know. Like, I know in my mind, I know. I just need to do it. See, we're just going to have a class. It's just going to be me and you. It's a one-on-one. We, like, why are you playing, girl? With my needs too. Yes, you know, I help you. I have no problem with that. I'm going to have to do that. Okay. All right, then. Well, I do have one final question for you that I actually asked all of my guests. Okay. And it's something that I learned along my own personal journey, and I know that it's different for everybody, and I would love to hear your aspect. Okay. But how do you define happiness and success? What does it look like for you? Well, um, I'll start with success. Okay. And okay. the reason why is because it has changed in meaning so much for me, especially over the probably the past 10 to 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> for me, success is when I can go home at night and be excited about the decisions I've made today because they'll impact my future positively. And okay. so there's, uh, you know, I don't have a, um, you know, I want to aspire to do this anymore. All those things used to keep me upset. You know, well, you know, I'm 35 now. I, I, I can't do this. I'm, I just turned 39. I haven't done that. But what I found out was all of these things that I have done have accomplished something. And it may mm -hmm. not be what someone else had lined up for me to do or to be, but I'm so... You know, um, it, it actually, and it turns into a happiness because if I'm content, I'm fulfilled with everything I've done today because these are my decisions. This is how it's going to impact my life. And this is how it's, it's going to impact my children's future. So that's success for me. And then going to the happiness thing, happiness for me, because I think I'm still redefining happiness. Okay. Um, and I will share just a little a piece of a moment with you. Over the past year or so, I lost, I fell out of contact with a couple of family members. We had a falling out. It was <laughs> serious to the point where I was like, I'm never speaking to y'all again. But um, during that time, I had time to reflect on what is it that I was looking for or lacking that made me feel like I needed certain relationships. And what I found was I was a lot stronger than I thought I was. I found out that, that I didn't need what I thought I needed and I needed more of the things that I thought that would just make me somewhat content. And when I started balancing out what's important to me and my nuclear family, instead of trying to consider everyone else in the world, my happiness started to grow. And so it made me much more content. It made me more fulfilled. It made me able to say the things that I was not able to say or do the things that I thought were impossible. And so now I'm at a place where I'm happy. I'm really happy. I love my life. I love my kids. I love my relationship with my husband. I'm able to look at any of the other relationships that I have outside of these four walls and say, hey, I need this from you or I don't need that from you. And it's okay. And if you don't love me the same way that I love you, I'm good. You know, yeah. you don't change anything about what's going on in these four walls, but I'm happy with what I have. I'm happy with who we are and everything. And it just makes my life that much better every day. Oh my God. Like, I love that. I mean, despite the whole family thing, like I, like I, I really hate that happened, but yeah. I love that because yeah, I, I hate, like, I really hate that, but I know, and it, it's been my experience as well, and I can definitely 100% agree with you on that. Once I began to refill or fill my own cup, mm -hmm. I then have more to give to others. But that's what made me happy. And if I'm drained and I'm still trying to, quote, unquote, produce, but I'm drained, then mm -hmm. shit, I'm, I'm SOL. Like, I'm right. flat out SOL, and it, it affects my mood. It affects everything. I, I, I got you on that. Yeah. I yeah. got you on that. But I will say you are the first guest I've had to define success as a day-to-day -day choice or a day-to-day -day option. I've yeah, never yeah. heard that before. And I equally, like I really, again, it has never ever registered and I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. But it is. It is a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah, it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I will say as an aside, I have... I 
handle some of those relationships with my family members and you Which know we're good. yeah we're working on it so you know that's and good. I'm good <clears throat> but that's a day-to-day -day thing too because I'm I haven't okay <laughs> like oh <I'll, clears throat> like I haven't like yeah. I mean I'm, well, yeah marriage, and marriage is a choice too marriage is a, as a every, every morning you wonder if you're gonna choke them out hello girl here that's a whole nother job. Like if you don't if you don't get them damn socks, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like, like, yes, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation, baby. That's a whole nother, we need to do that. We need to go back and do that that podcast at another day, okay? On <laughs> <Our> marriage. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, Miss Heather, I, I definitely, I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I know I've, I've officially only met you once, right. and um, officially, I'm like, but we, I don't know why we haven't gotten out even just to have coffee. I know, it's time. It's time. Like, we need to do that. I mean, and I can't promise about the coupons, but I'll at least try. But at least have coffee. I don't know why we haven't, yeah, but we, we need should. to do that. Yeah. We let's need make, to do that. Make it a priority. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay so um I, I definitely want to go ahead and wrap up but is there anything that you want to share with everyone it's something that we haven't touched bases on that you just want people to um i guess either know about you or encourage others any anything out there that, that you would like to do well i would like to encourage others i'd like to encourage everyone to just really reach inside yourself and get to know who you are you know whether that is you know, and I talk a lot about sex, but I think, um, and, and the reason being is because I feel like um, that's one of those things that stops people from just really getting to know who they are and mm. what, knowing what pleasures you uh, sexually, what pleasures you, you know, career wise, what pleasures you spiritually or whatever in your life, you know, grab that and get to know, you know, who you are on whatever level you need to get to know yourself. And be open to different ideas of happiness, and yeah. that's that's just really all the thing I can I can offer is just be open, um, because what I find is when you just go ahead and open up, you know, for those different definitions of happiness, you find that you can reinvent yourself, you can you know find out more about yourself, and you can love your life. Oh yes. That was actually a question I posted yesterday. I'm like, when did you first fall in love with yourself? <gasps> and to see the responses on that and the different ages um, mm -hmm. from um, 15 up to 47. Yes. So um, it's what I saw yesterday and it blew my mind. But mm -hmm. people are still finding themselves and discovering themselves and, and happiness plays a part in that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right then. Well, I definitely, Miss Heather, I'm going to be linking up everything associated with you i do need you to send me your web page though because okay. i don't see that so send me your web page so i can link all of that up in the um the show notes here and okay. i definitely want to help you out as much as i possibly can because again i i'm gonna say it again y'all this is a dang on superwoman and like she is out here and as you have heard she's she's rocking and rolling like and she I'm stopping you know and that's the thing is I, i'm a i love to help my team is growing. I'm trying to help everybody find their happiness, whether it's with bedroom candy, couponing, or whatever else you want to do. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just here to help. All right. Well, Miss Heather, I love you so much. Thank you so much for saying yes. So, so, oh, you're so silly. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying yes. And I guess I'll see you at, at coffee time. Okay. Well, see you <laughs> All right. See, I got a lot to see him in the morning. All right. <laughs> O-M-G. <laughs> okay, you totally just received some excellent knowledge, and I know that you loved it. If you did truthfully love it, I need your help. By all means, share this podcast with everyone that you know. Don't hold all of this knowledge to yourself. We need your ratings. We need your reviews, we need your comments, and we need your shares. But only share it, only comment, if you received some damn good knowledge today. I know that you did, so I'll wait on your reviews to start coming in. <laughs> okay, until the next one. See ya.